Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation on how to prepare for Microsoft certifications. I'm Keith Atherton and I'm a senior software developer for an IT consultancy in Edinburgh called Quorum. My Twitter and LinkedIn contact details are on screen if anyone wishes to contact me directly after this talk with any questions. A big thank you to Dwayne Natwick and Derek Smith for the opportunity to speak at Azure Back to School 2022. I'm relatively new to studying towards Microsoft certifications and I've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way that I wanted to share with everyone. So the topics that we'll cover today are what are Microsoft certifications, how to achieve a certification, learning resources, discounts and offers, and some study tips. So first off, if you're brand new to Microsoft certifications, what are they? If you see these funny little blue badges and you wonder what they are, we'll go and look into these a bit more. But before we cover the Microsoft certifications, just a quick note to say there are plenty of other technical certifications out there for other vendors. So we've got things like AWS, Oracle, VMware. There are plenty out there, but for this talk, we'll actually look into the Microsoft certification specifically. So the old school Microsoft certifications, uh, the previous version, were mostly product based. So these were really geared towards a very specific version of a product, say, for example, Windows Server 2016 or SQL Server 2000. And they had names like Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate or MCSA. And there's also MCSD and MCSE. Now, these have been deprecated and there's a new type of certification going forward. The way they currently work is that certifications are now role based. So it's more about what you would do in your job or what you would want to be doing in your job. And there's plenty of different roles we can see here on the right hand side. So we've got things like if you want to be a developer or a data engineer or an AI engineer and the certifications are now geared towards not specifically the product because some of these roles might actually use the same products. Let's say a developer and a data engineer, they both might use SQL Server and many other roles might too. So it's more about what the day to day is, what you would do in the role, what tools and services you would use as well. And to earn these certifications, we need to pass one or more exams, which we'll come on to a bit more later. So the different types of certifications we've got if we look on the top right, we can see the badges there. We've got things like fundamentals. This is generally about understanding the concepts. This is seen as a beginner level certification and they don't expire. And they're considered a really good starting point to kind of get a good overview of what's involved, what services are available, um, how things work and so on. And then those middle two, we've got the associate, almost like an intermediate level one and then expert, which is seen as an advanced level one. And these two are classed as role based certifications. Now, these have an expiry of one year and we'll come on to later on how they get renewed. And the very last one there on the right hand side is specialty. So we actually have a few additional ones. We do have specialty. If you have something very specific like managing SAP workloads in Azure or specializing with their Cosmos DB, their NoSQL database offering. But we've also got things like Microsoft Certified Educator you know, for teaching and Microsoft Office as well, whether it be Excel or other tools in the Office suite. So when we look at the certifications, we can actually browse the list uh, on the certification portal. We can see here in this screen, we've got several options here. There's things for Dynamics 365, uh, DevOps engineer, we can see there's some associate levels, uh, there's a specialty in there as well. So when I was first looking at certifications, to be honest, I was a bit overwhelmed. I mean, there's a lot there. There's a lot of options. Where do you begin? Uh, you know, what's the plan of attack? So one thing that did help me was this Microsoft certifications chart. There's the link down there at the bottom. And on the right hand side is the zoom out to see all of this chart. And we can see it's actually broken down into different topics. 
So we've got Azure, which is really the flagship offering for certifications, Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Power Platform, and then at the bottom there, we've got security, compliance, and identity. And within these, they're actually broken down into sections for fundamentals, and there may be several uh, certification options within there, specialty, and then the role-based, the ones we mentioned where we've actually got the associate level and the expert level. So if we look on the left-hand side, this one's a bit more of a zoom in on the Azure offering in the very top left corner of the chart. And we can see roles there like Azure Administrator Associate. So again, Associate, that intermediate level. And the AZ104, the code underneath, that's actually the exam you need to pass to earn that certification. And again, we'll cover more about the exams later on. And we can see in the bottom right as well, we've got that Windows Server Hybrid Administrator Associate. That's actually got two exams uh, that you need to pass to earn that certification. Another thing that was really helpful to me is to say, OK, I know what kind of role that I want to do. Uh, you know, how do I get there? What, what path of certifications do I want to go down to get to that specific role? So something that was really useful was this Microsoft Training and Certification Guide. Um, this gives you training and certification options. It can give you a bit of a roadmap or tell you where to go for a specific uh, you know, activity or thing you want to do in your role. The different guides as well uh, for Azure, Microsoft 365 and all the topics that we saw in the poster. And on the screen there, we can see this is part of the guide for Azure. So on the very left hand side, we've got, you know, you're new to the cloud or new to Azure. The recommended starting point is Azure Fundamentals, which is the AZ900 exam. And personally, that's where I started to. That's the first one I took. It was a really good overview of Azure, what the services are, what the offering is, how it works, the cost model, everything. It was a really, really good overview. And from there, you can then choose to specialize. So if we look on the roadmap on the right hand side, let's say we want to bring cloud agility on prem. We can see the very bottom right uh, part of that uh, roadmap just there. We've got the Azure Stack Hub Operator Associate with the exam AZ600. So we can see, you know, that is one, uh, you know, one option we can take. We can go down that route if that's relevant to our role or something we want to do. So just a brief note on my certification journey so far, I've actually passed five fundamental exams so far and earned five certifications. So again, I'm still relatively new to this. And this was part of the reason behind this talk is the, there are things I've learned along the way that I wish I'd known when I first started, you know, what the exam would look like when you take it, um, how you go about booking the exam, um, what's involved exactly. Are there discounts and offers or free exam vouchers? Things I wish I'd known when I'd done that very first one. And that's why I'm sharing them here today. So I've passed these five on the screen. I won't go through them all. I'm currently studying for a few more fundamentals. I'm trying to get a good over overview of the different Microsoft services before I then start to specialize and look into role-based certifications. Now I would say that this path is quite fluid. I've changed it a few times already. It may depend what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day role or the role that I'm aiming for as well. So this may likely change for me and your, your path may likely change as you go along as well. So the benefits of certifications, this is straight from the, the Microsoft site. Um, they've got some stats here. Uh, they say 91% uh, say that certification has, has increased their confidence. 74% say uh, they get greater work autonomy and independence. 94% of the decision makers do say that uh, certified team members provide added value as well. So we'll look into how to achieve a certification. And there are a couple of options when you take the exams. You can either go to a test center, which is what I've mostly done so far, or you can do an online proctored exam. So this is where you can take the exam at home. You can do it online. You have a webcam. So you can show the proctor the, the, the room that you're in, you know, that the doors are closed. There's no one coming and going between the room, you know, so there's no chance of cheating, you know, uh, no devices in the room. And 
on the right hand side, we can see there as well, that's where we can uh, book the exam. So we've got this schedule with Pearson View. You, you go ahead and click on the button there and it takes you to a screen where you can see your local test centers. You can see the time slots available and you can go ahead and book that exam. Uh, and just a note as well, the, the role based, the, the associate and expert exams that may contain labs, uh, also known as performance based testing. And this is where you may have a view into the Azure portal and you may have a task list of you need to do these several tasks as you go along, actually hands on in the portal. The times you get for the exam, they do depend on what level of exam you're taking. Uh, we can see in the table there, let's say fundamental exams, you get 45 minutes for the exam itself, but you've got a seat duration of 65 minutes. So this is getting set up, reading the NDA, uh, giving feedback on questions after the exam and so on. You do get a bit more time for other things as well. So we'll have a quick look at the cost breakdown. Uh, now this is going to be quite UK based, uh, just as the approach I'm coming from personally. But obviously you can choose which country, whether it's the US or any other country in the list and see the cost specific to your region. Now, I'll look at that starting point, that Azure Fundamentals. So if I was going to go for the Microsoft certified Azure Fundamentals, we can see in the portal that I need the AZ900 exam. On the right hand side, we can see for the badge there for that certification, I need that one exam. Now, the cost there is £69. And then if I add VAT, uh, which we do in the UK, that comes to £82.80. Now, if we have a look at an expert certification, so uh, the top there, we can see uh, for that certification, we need one exam. And then for that one exam there, we can also see there's also a prerequisite on an associate level certification as well. And I do happen to know that that particular certification has one exam required for it. So if we wanted to jump straight to an expert level, we actually need to take the associate level exam. So this would be the Azure Administrator Associate, which is the AZ104 exam. These cost a bit more than the fundamentals. That's £113 plus VAT. And then if we do pass that, we're then able to take the Azure Solutions Architect Expert uh, certification. The exam there is AZ305 and it has the same cost as well. So if we both were to pass those first time, that would cost us £271.20. So we can see that if you was going to take several exams, uh, even if you were to pass uh, first time, you wanted to take 10, 15, 20 exams or more, that cost can add up. So one thing we'll look into later on are discounts uh, and even free exam vouchers in some cases as well. Just a note as well, there are beta exams. Uh, so these beta exams are when Microsoft are trying out a, a new exam. They're looking to evaluate the quality of the exam. Uh, they want feedback from people taking it and they have a very big discount for people taking these. And if you do pass the beta exam, it does count towards your certification. It's still valid. And there are other discounts and offers available. So these get announced on the Microsoft Learn blog. We can see a snapshot on the right hand side just there. Um, I've not taken any personally, but I know people who have. And some of them do say that there is a long wait sometimes to get those results back. When Microsoft get all the feedback and all the results in, it can even take weeks or even longer in some cases. So when you take an exam, um, you do get uh, the exam results. Um, the exams contain a thousand points. Uh, the passing score is 700 points. <clears throat> now some questions are worth more, uh, more than one point, some are worth one point. And on the right hand side, we can see an example of one of mine. So this was the AI 900 exam. Um, I was lucky enough to pass this one, but one of the really cool things with this is in the bottom, we can see the skills measured, these five different categories in this case, they were broken down. Now, you don't get told exactly which questions you got correct and which you got wrong, but you can see a percentage bar of what you did get correct in that particular topic. So if you were to fail or, you know, it was very close or you had one area that was, was much weaker than others, it 
it really is a good clue to say where you need to focus your efforts or you need to revise a bit more and read up a bit more for an exam retake. So this can be really useful if you do need to do that. Um, and I do find that with most exams I've taken so far, you do get your answer, you do get the, uh, the score pretty much instantly or within a few minutes after taking the exam as well. And again, you just get the actual score. You, do, you don't get the actual results of which answers uh, you got correct and which were wrong. So if you're lucky enough to pass a certification exam, they do send you an email. It looks a bit like this on the right hand side. Uh, it says congratulations. You, you get a picture of the badge. You do get a link where you can click to claim your badge and it goes to a platform where you can you can actually keep track of all the certifications uh, that you've you've earned so far. And from there, you can share them to different social media channels as well. But if you don't pass the, uh, the exam, if you do fail it, you know, that's part of life that happens. Not the end of the world. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. If you do fail it, you can rebook it, you can retake it. It's absolutely fine. Um, and when you do retake it, it does require paying for again. It's not a free retake, unfortunately. So we'll look at renewals. Again, when we was looking at those role-based, um, those associate and expert level certifications, they have uh, an expiry of one year. Previously, it used to be two years and you would then have to retake the, the entire exam all over again. However, the current approach is that renewal is free. You can do it online at home. The renewals are available around six months before your certification expires. So you have plenty of notice to go ahead and do it. And if you don't pass it the first time, you can immediately uh, attempt the assessment again. And there are some rules that, you know, if you if you fail again, you need to wait 24 hours or a certain period of time, then you can do retakes again. But I've had it on good authority. It's much easier, much more straightforward than it used to be. So apparently a really good process. And when you do the renewal, you get another 12 months uh, added to your expiry, added to the original expiry that you had. OK, so we'll cover some learning resources. And number one for me is always Microsoft Learn. So this is Microsoft's learning portal. It's free. It's online. Really easy to use. We can see on the screenshot there, there's lots of gamification. Uh, you break broken down by modules. You can walk through. You earn different badges. Uh, you get different XP points as you go. Now, this is mostly reading material. Now and again, you might get a short video explaining a concept. Uh, sometimes you even get hands-on labs. It might open up a sandbox, which is free of charge to use, and actually guide you through the steps to uh, instantiate a service or use a certain feature. So it's really, really valuable, really, really good. One thing, that, <coughs> excuse me, one thing that's useful for the exams is the skills measured. Uh, this is where you can check the actual skills required and the actual breakdown. So for the AZ900, again, that Azure Fundamentals, on the right hand side, you can see it's broken down for three main bullet points. We've got describe cloud concepts, which it makes up 25 to 30 percent of the exam. Describe Azure architecture and services, which is a bit bigger, 35 to 40 percent of the exam. And describe Azure management and governance, 30 to 35 percent of the exam. So you get a good idea here, you know, what the weightings are. And then when you go further down, we can see where it says functional groups. It breaks it down even further. We won't go through all of these, but it's just a snapshot of part of that describe cloud concepts. You can see, you know, things like define the cloud computing, compare cloud pricing models, you know, the specific things they'll be looking for in the exam. And you can download this, uh, this PDF document with these exam skills. And it's a good thing to bear in mind as you're revising and preparing for that exam. Microsoft Docs, really good if you need to drill into anything deeper uh, and just get a deeper understanding of a specific product or feature. Very, very valuable and a good companion to the Microsoft Learn uh, site. Also, there's the Microsoft Learn exam readiness um, section, and these provide different exam prep strategies. So you've got things like enhanced study guides. Uh, you've got on-demand videos on Microsoft Learn some really useful things. However, one of the most useful things I've found is the Microsoft Exam Sandbox. 
And this is something, if you've never done one of the exams before, I think is really valuable. So on the right hand side, you can see a demo of that certification exam experience. And you can see there, you know, there's a dummy question, but this is the actual UI that you do see when you take the exam. Now, this example is actually of uh, a multiple choice, but it does take you through the different UIs you would see. So you can get things like build lists, drag and drop, uh, many other things as well. And it's, it's when you take the exam, it's just like this. You've got the time remaining in the top right with a progress bar of how many questions in you are. So it helps you judge the time, how much longer you've got remaining. Um, you can also review questions later. You can, you can tick that uh, checkbox right there or tick one to leave feedback. Uh, again, when you finish the exam, you can leave feedback, which is something I've done before. If I didn't find that a question was particularly clear or if I found a, a typo in one of the answers, perhaps. Um, so again, if you want to get some familiarity before taking that first exam, this is a really good place to check out. So a bit more on that exam readiness zone. Uh, I've noticed that they're actually building up the video content for this site at the moment. We can see some on the right hand side there for AZ800, AZ801. And these are a few more videos, a bit more content in preparation for the exam. Really, really valuable stuff. Just, just another way of taking in that knowledge uh, in preparation for the exam. Really useful. And also there's something I've noticed recently, which is some exam sample questions. So my software actually exploring the possibility of providing some sample questions as an exam preparation resource. And again, these are sample questions. They're not the actual questions you would see in the exam, but they do give you a good flavor of what you can expect. So on the right hand side, we can see there the question one, typically I'm seeing uh, up to 20 question and answers. So you can go through, there's a multiple choice there with four options, A, B, C, and D. And then below, it gives you the answer. In this case, it's D. It tells you what objective this is um, This is part of and the rationale, uh, the reason for that answer. And then a URL for actually going to Microsoft uh, Learn to actually learn more about that particular question. So I found these really useful as almost like a last minute um practice exam, if you will, just to see, you know, what kind of score you're getting. Are, are you ready for the exam? Uh, YouTube, there's tons of content out there on YouTube, some really good instructors, some great things that I kept up to date. And I'll give special mention to John Savile's technical training. He's in the screenshot right there. And he's got some absolutely uh, brilliant videos. Again, there are plenty of other good instructors there. But you know, John's content, he tends to keep up to date. He covers lots of subjects. Uh, there are no ads uh, at time of writing when you go into the videos, it's just no nonsense. Often he brings up a whiteboard, he'll diagram the concepts, uh, explain them very clearly, really, really good stuff. So I can highly recommend that. I'll mention a quick, uh, a quick note on books. Personally, I've not used any to prep for exams uh, as yet. Maybe I will in the future. I've heard some really good uh, reports. There's some great books out there, again, that really get you ready for the exams, cover all the, all the topics very clearly. One thing that I would just want to mention is it's worth bearing in mind how up to date the books are as well. So some of these certifications, they may change every three, six months quite often. Uh, you know, new Azure services are coming out. Some get deprecated, some merge. Again, there's, you know, it's not just Azure, there's Power Platform and other other uh, things within Microsoft as well. Now, if you've found a book uh, and it looks good, but it's four years old, um, but this uh, exam that you're preparing for has changed within the last three months, it may be worth considering how up to date the book is. You know, is there an, a PDF addendum? Is there a newer version of the book that they've provided? If not, the older book it may or may not be up to date. So just something worth bearing in mind. Udemy, uh, that's a platform I've used a few times. Uh, there's some really great courses on there. Uh, again, I'll focus on the AZ900, this Azure Fundamentals to start with. And the screenshot there, we've got uh, a shot of one of Scott Duffy's courses. Uh, he, I've used a few of his courses before, and there are plenty of other great instructors on there as well. Uh, one thing that Scott does really well, which I like, is he's great at explaining things. And also he makes a point of keeping the courses up to date. So when you buy a course, you, you have it for life. 
I've actually bought this AZ900. I bought this for that very first exam that I took and I found it was excellent. And you can see there that it says, uh, you know, May 2022. That's when this course was updated. And also that's around the time when the Azure Fundamentals certification exam was also updated. So you know it's got the latest and greatest info. This is not some course from three years ago that has not been kept up to date. So that's a really useful thing. If you buy the exam, uh, so you buy this course, but you, you don't get around to it for a few months, you know, if this gets kept up to date, you know you're in you're in a good place. Uh, now, one thing here, actually, uh, it, this is on sale at the moment, $12.99. It's actually beat me on the slide there. It was $14.99 when I last checked. Um, so there are offers on Udemy quite often. I do find there's, there's very often sales. So, uh, you know, a tip for me would be, unless you're in a hurry, if you do see the course at full price, I'd say, you know, maybe wait a few weeks. It may go back on sale again. Uh, so just something to bear in mind. Plural site. I won't go into detail, but this is another great uh, online um, learning portal. Plenty of great videos. One thing I would say with Plural site, <clears throat> I would say that if you do look at some of the premium offerings that do cost a little more, some of them do include practice exams and uh, course preparation uh, specifically as well. So if you're getting Plural site and you want to get ready for an exam, it may be worth looking into those premium options. LinkedIn Learning. Now, this one is one of my favorites. I've, I've had LinkedIn Premium uh, for many years. I think their, uh, their LinkedIn Learning uh, portal with their video courses are absolutely brilliant. Um, they can often have you know, multiple choice quizzes at the end, um, different kind of uh, challenges where they show you the solution as well. Um, and there's, uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty of content on there. So we can see for the AZ900, we can actually see that this you know, course has been kept up to date and some really, really good courses there. <clears throat> now, there's plenty of other online training options. I won't go through the, uh, through them all, but there's things like CBT Nuggets, Cloud Skills, IO, Skylines Academy, and plenty others that I've not listed here as well. So plenty of choice out there. Now, one of the higher cost options is using a learning partner. So this is where you can use uh, an external um, uh, you know, educational um, company. So I've used some in the UK. We can see in the screenshot there. I've used some previously in other companies uh, and consultancies where I've worked like QA, Learning Tree, New Horizons, and they've all been really good. Uh, they do cost a bit more, but the benefit with these is that they can be instructor led. So you've got someone on hand who's very knowledgeable. You can ask questions or drill a bit deeper into an area if it's not quite clear or you don't understand. So that can be useful if you do need that level. Microsoft also have official practice tests. Uh, you can pay for access to these tests. So the, the, the example there is the AZ900. This is the official one. You get detailed answers and references. Um, you can get an instant score report. So I've personally not used these. I've used some unofficial uh, practice uh, tests. I, I must admit that the mileage can vary with those. Uh, some of the unofficial ones that I've done, the non-Microsoft ones, some I've absolutely fl flunked it with 50% and one I aced with 100%, but then I actually went and took the actual exam and got like an 85% kind of equivalent. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, see how you get on with those, but yeah, the Microsoft do have the official practice test. Um, and I've heard from, from others that it, it can be very useful. Okay. We're going to look at some discounts now. So one of them is 30 days to learn it. We can see on the right hand side, we've just got part of the, uh, part of the listing that they offer there for Azure virtual desktop fundamentals, Azure AI fundamentals, and so on. So if you take this challenge, um, you can be eligible for 50% off the cost of a Microsoft certification exam. And what you have to do is complete the challenge, which is usually just a series of Microsoft Learn modules you need to complete uh, and you need to do it within 30 days. So if you see something in those challenges that you're keen on earning the certification for, this is a great way of getting a discount. Another one is the Microsoft Build Cloud Skills Challenge. Now, this one actually did end in June, 
that this is something that's come around with different build conferences again and again, and hopefully they'll bring us back again. Um, but the last one that went ahead on the right hand side, we can see the different challenges. There were, there were eight this time. We can see things like Power Platform App Maker Challenge, uh, the Azure Cosmos DB Developer Challenge. There's plenty in there. Uh, now, the great thing with this is that if you do complete this challenge, again, it's the Microsoft Learn modules you need to complete. Uh, on this occasion, you get a free Microsoft certification exam voucher. So again, if you see the right thing in there you're after, this is, this is great. Now, one of my favorites, uh, particularly for the fundamental uh, certifications, is the Microsoft Virtual Training Days. So if you sign up to one of these, if you find the, you know, the, the right course that you're after, Normally it's spread over a day or two days. It's a pre-recorded video course you watch online. You have to watch it at the specific times that it's it's made available. Now, when you do this, you get great training. You get an expert trainer delivering the course. And at the end of it, when you complete the training, you get a free exam voucher um, to take the exam as well. So I've noticed for most fundamentals, this is actually available and it's great. It's a win-win. So I'd highly recommend it. Someone also gave me a, like a pro tip with this as well, is that let's say you've got a busy job. You look at the courses for your region. For me, it's the UK. All the courses are available, but they're just during weekdays, during working hours. But you just can't take that time available. It may be worth going to the Microsoft events page and looking for virtual training days delivered in your language, in my case, English, but maybe for other regions. So those courses may be delivered uh, you know, before your work day or in the evening after your work day. So that way you can actually attend the training and it doesn't disrupt your work day. So uh, worth checking out. <clears throat> now, when you've taken the training days, uh, you do, for me, it's normally been within a, a few days after the training. You do get an exam looking a bit like the one on the right hand side there that I took for uh, the SCI fundamentals. And from there, you've got a link when you click it. It actually takes you to the voucher. Um, you don't need to book your exam straight away. The voucher does have an expiry and it's usually a good few months that you get. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what you see after taking the, the training. Also, uh, it's worth considering employer support. You know, uh, you know, who you work for, you know, do they provide training? Do, are they prepared to bring in one of these external training providers that this could be useful for you getting ready for the exams? Uh, do they offer something like a plural site subscription or subscription to another online learning portal or even contribute towards one of courses? You know, for example, the Udemy ones we saw but, um, earlier, would they contribute towards the exam costs? Um, and money aside, you know, many of us are very, very busy people. So, uh, you know, it may be that time is more valuable than the money. And would the employer allow you to study during your work hours? let's say a couple hours every Friday afternoon, just finish up the week with some learning, uh, you know, something reasonable for them, but for you as well. Um, and if you do need to justify it with an employer, you know, the, bear in mind, there are benefits for employers. We already looked at the statistics earlier that Microsoft quoted, you know, they do see people with certifications as, as bringing more value, you know, by default, it is more education. You know, you, you're covering plenty of bases when you study for these things you're confident enough to take these exams, uh, you know, so they will get trained em employees, um, but also some employers, they might actually have Microsoft partnership or want to work towards a Microsoft partnership. And often to get this partnership, they need several employees who have passed certain certifications. So they get different um, points towards different competencies that uh, the company could be a partner with you know, in certain aspects of the Microsoft tech stack and the employer with the partnership, they may get benefits and different discounts as well or different uh, work sent their way. So, you know, it's a win-win. There are benefits both sides. So it's it's worth bearing in mind contacting your, your employer to see what support available. And other certification prep as well, just the very last note on this, there are tons out there these days. We've got things like blogs, study guides, Again, lots of practice tests, uh, some better than others in my experience anyway. I'll give a mention to Gregor Sutti's blog. There's, there's a screenshot on the right-hand side. Uh, I do know Gregor, a really nice guy. 
does so much for the community, shares lots of knowledge. But it was actually Gregor uh, getting started with certifications that inspired me to get started. Um, and again, you can see the, the right hand side, there's a really good breakdown of the skills measured at that time for AZ900, uh, you know, and different things to consider. So again, there's plenty of content out there, lots of people uh, sharing lots of lots of knowledge. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll cover some study tips just to finish off. So study tip one, managing exam stress. Now this is really important affects everyone differently. Some people get the stress and anxiety and feel the pressure of an exam, um, you know, and that's completely natural. It's a completely natural reaction, but there are plenty of guides online uh, and other people with good advice on how to manage this and take care of yourself because mental health is really important. Uh, we need to take care of ourselves. So there's a screenshot there of a guide uh, from Student Minds here in the UK. Really, really good guide. And there's plenty of other guides out there. Some may work better than others for you. And for this one in particular, we've got things like keeping things in perspective. You know, for many of us, failing an exam doesn't mean we lose our job. You know, it just means we need to rebook it and take it again if we want to. Or we take some time out and then retake it. Or we study more and then rebook it. You know, it, it's not the end of the world. It's absolutely fine. You know, trying to avoid bad habits, getting support from friends and family, you know, speaking to them if it does affect you or just, you know, sharing your feelings, uh, whatever works best for you. So it's really worth looking into if this affects you. And next tip is to prepare. You know, we've covered lots of things here, like the different Microsoft Learn Portal, um, different video courses, different reading material, some free, some costs. You could also do other things like speak to people who use these services. You could also get hands-on experience using the services, you know, within Azure or whatever the tech stack may be yourself as well. Just get some familiarity, get a bit more experience and get a bit more confidence. And on that note, be confident. You know, if you've done all that preparation, you've, you know, you've gone through all the learnings that you need to do, you've tried some sample questions, you're in the best place you could possibly be to take this exam, just going confident knowing you're ready for this and you're just going to give it your best shot. Next tip is to read the question properly. So some of these tips other people have, have passed to me and they're really valuable. Um, and there's a really good one here about if you read that question properly, because the wording may be not what you quite expect. It, it, instead of which services do you need to do ABC, the question may be worded, you know, uh, which are not the services you need to do, uh, you need to use to do A, B and C. It, it may be, it may be a negative in there. It may be worded slightly differently. So it's really worth just take that time to thoroughly read the question, make sure you understand it and try not to rush. <clears throat> and talking of not rushing is use your available time as well. As we saw from that Microsoft exam sandbox with the example questions, you do see the questions and the time remaining in the top right corner when you take the exam. So if you have 45 minutes for that fundamentals exam, don't feel you need to rush it and get it done within five, 10 minutes. Take your time. If you need to go back and review questions, if you're available to, you know, because when you pass certain sections, you, you can't go back to previous sections sometimes. Use that time, go back and review them if you need to. Um, so just don't feel you need to rush. Also, don't skip any questions. There's no penalty for getting anything wrong. You, you don't get deducted points or anything. So if you see questions, try and take educated guesses. Try and rule out some of the answers. If you can exclude them, you think, OK, that's not A and B are definitely not the ones I need. It's, it now leaves me with C and D. You know, it's now 50 50. Or you could take an educated guess to say, oh, you know what? I, I really think it's this particular answer. So I would say don't skip anything. Answer everything as you go. And the very last tip I'll leave you with is something that I use, which is when I read the question, I think of the answer before I see the options. So if there was a multiple choice with a question, let's say I get four options, I actually want to think about what I would answer with if I wasn't presented with the options. So 
this could be giving you confidence that when you do see the options, if the answer comes up, you were expecting, you know, you're going with your gut or you feel like, yes, this is definitely the one that I need to answer with. Because sometimes if I read the uh, the available option uh, options too quickly, it can sometimes sort of bias me uh, and sway me with, with my answer. So what I'll do is I'll go through, this is just an example question. This is not an official Microsoft question, believe it or not. Uh, with all the NDAs and everything, I, I couldn't possibly share anything like that. So this is this is unofficial. So here's the question. What is the name of Microsoft's cloud computing service? Okay, I'm going to give this thought before I see the four options presented. Um, I've heard of Microsoft Azure. Pretty sure it's that. I've heard of AWS, GCP and others. They're different providers. Okay, so I know it's not them. Pretty sure it's Azure. So let's see if it comes up with the options. Okay, Microsoft Beige, never heard of it. Microsoft Gray, no, I don't think so. Microsoft Azure, Gray, okay, yep, that's the one I was thinking before I saw the options. And Microsoft Magnolia, I, I don't know what that is. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Microsoft Azure. So again, you know, it's a bit silly, but whatever works best for you. Okay. Let's finish this up. So the topics we covered today are what are Microsoft certifications, how to achieve a certification, different learning resources, discounts and offers, and some study tips as well. So now that we've reached the end, uh, if anyone wants to ask me questions, feel free to contact me directly. Uh, my details are on screen now. I'm usually quite active on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for your time and please do check out all the other great sessions uh, as part of Azure Back to School 2022 and keep on learning. Bye now.